Hello learners, are you all ready to learn? Come learn with me, a physics focus for grade 12. We'll be focusing on paper one today when our main focus is on mechanics, which is actually constitutes about 65 marks of the paper one. And we are talking about a lot of marks here. That is 43.3% of the paper that is level three already so we are looking at 50 percent of your multiple choice questions as well that is five multiple choice questions which make up 10 marks and we are looking at question two which is usually your newton's laws on question two and then your vertical projectile motion on question three and then um, we have got question four with momentum and impulse and question five, where we are dealing with work, energy, and power. So today, let's start with the first part, which is your Newton's law. We are focusing on the Newton's law. And on the Newton's law, we'll be actually, um, remember that this is something that you have learned already in your grade 10 and um, in your grade 11, which is, um, but it is now examined in your grade 12. So basically, you need to know how to state the laws of Newton, which are three. And on top of you being able to state them, you must be able to use them and to apply them as well. So let us focus on the first law of Newton, which actually talks to that an object will remain at rest or will continue to move at a constant motion unless acted upon by a non-zero resultant force. And then we also have got um, Newton's second law, which actually says now that the object, where now there is a net force acting on it, it's going to accelerate in the direction of the net force with an acceleration that is directly proportional to the net force of the object and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. So remember, you can even use um, your formulas w to actually remember these laws. For example, when you use F, net equals to ma in this case f net equals to ma is actually found on your formal formula sheet that part there is actually found on your formula sheet so you can just rewrite it and say a is equal to okay let's increase the thickness there and say a is equal to f over m that means that the one that will be on top that is a equals to F over M. That is the one that is on top, which is the force, is actually acceleration is the one that's directly proportional to the force, and it is inversely proportional to the mass of the object. And then quickly, um, then we also have got Newton's third law of motion, which talks about an, a force that object A exists on, uh, on object B that is equal in magnitude, and it is simultaneously and um, here we will look at the problems and how to actually be able to identify your action reaction forces. And then we also have got Newton's law of universal gravitation. What I want to emphasize here is that the force here is always a force of attraction firstly, and that um, uh, this force of attraction is, that means that things are always pulled and um, it is directly proportional to the mass, to the product of the masses of the, of the object and then inversely proportional to the square distance between their centers. Then we also have got um, G, which is the gravitational acceleration, is equal to um, Gm divided by R squared. Um, usually what our learners tend to forget, forget when it comes to this problem is that the mass that you use there is not the mass of the object, but rather we always use the mass of the planet. So let us now look at the problems that we actually have to actually um, address what I am talking about. Let me try and erase this. Okay, there, there, and that. So if you can see from the diagram that I have, this is a summary of all the Newton's laws like I have explained. So for example, if you look in the first object, we have got a ball there that is actually um, stationary.
We have got a ball that is stationary. We have got a ball here, and it is stationary. Therefore, this ball will remain stationary, not because there are no forces acting on it, but because the forces that are acting on it are at equilibrium, meaning that they, equal, they result in equals to zero. And then the ball now starts to move. Now there is a non-zero resultant force, which is the net that is actually um, causing the ball to stop moving. Now, remember that according to Newton's second law, so what we know is that in Newton's first law, F net will be equal to zero. Then now, on Newton's second law, it's actually now the object, as you can see, there is a man that's pushing a mass, that's pushing a trolley with a mass. So the trolley is going to move in the same direction of the force and with an acceleration that is directly proportional to the net force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. Now, as the force the man exerts on the trolley is increased, then the acceleration also increases. Hence, we say that the acceleration is directly proportional to the force. And now we say that the acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass of the object. As you can see, we have got two graphs here. And in these two graphs, um, actually, in this first graph here, this is between the relationship of acceleration and the mass of the object. So as you can see that the graph is decreasing. That means that acceleration is, 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 is inversely proportional to the mass of the object. And acceleration is directly proportional to the inverse of the mass. And now, meaning that as the mass of the object increases, the acceleration will decrease. So acceleration is the dependent variable here. And then we also have got the second graph, which is on my right. And here, the acceleration is directly proportional to the force of the object, meaning the, fo the net force that is exerted on the object. That is, as the net force increases, the acceleration also increases. Now, we also look at Newton's third law of motion. This is a force of ground on the foot. So what we know is that this force is simultaneously, meaning that um, as, the f the, the, as, as this man's foot is exerting a force on the ground, then the ground is also exerting a force on the man's foot. So we'll be looking at in these questions, especially in your multiple choice questions, because they tend to get tricky, and sometimes you don't know which one to pick, because the examiner will start to bring um, the normal force, they will start to bring um, uh, the, 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 they will start to bring the weight now, then um, talk about the objects being on the table and so on. So when we look here, it says now on Newton's universal law of gravitation that um, the, for, the, 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 the force, which is the attraction, force of attraction, is directly proportional to the product of the masses of, of the object and inversely proportional to the square distance between their centers. So remember that it has to be between the centers of the object and that as the mass of the object, either one of the mass or both of the masses increase, then the net force on the object will also increase. So the one that it is on top, it is directly proportional to, and the one that is underneath, it is inversely proportional to it. As you can see also in this um, diagram as well. Now I want us to look at a problem, a multiple choice question like problem, whereby we are focusing on um, these laws. So as you can see here, it actually says, this is a multiple choice question, which says, consider the following vector diagram, which one of these vector diagrams represents a zero resultant. So what we know is that firstly, if we are saying that um, there should be a zero resultant, it means that F net equals to zero. And then um, there is A, there's B, and there's C, there's D. So the key words here are zero resultant. If there is zero resultant, it means that all forces that are acting on the object have to actually have a closed vector diagram. So already you can eliminate B out because the vector diagram there is not closed. You are left with A, C, and D. Then if you look at A, A is actually having the object there at the bottom, and then it has got two forces, 
and then now there is a resultant in A. Hence, A is not the correct one. But if you look at C, C, this is a force that's pointing upwards, and this is a force that's pointing downwards, and this is a force that's pointing to the left. And now all these forces are actually in equilibrium. So the resultant there is zero, meaning that C is the correct answer and D is not because there is still a what a resultant D. So these are the type of questions that you, you, you can actually get in your multiple choice questions and you can use the elimination method like I have done with you to actually um, to, to answer that question because with your multiple choice questions, the answers are always there. Now, if you, if you were to look at one of these problems and try to answer it, again, it looks pretty much similar to that. If you look here, it says, which one of the following vector diagrams represents three forces acting on an object simultaneously while the object moves at constant velocity? Now, the examiner is putting constant velocity in caps because those are the keywords. They entail a lot of things. What do we know about constant velocity? It means that the initial velocity of the object is equal to the final velocity of the object. So that means that um, the object is moving. It's not stationary. However, there is no acceleration. So if there is no acceleration, then your F net equals to MA will be equal to zero. Therefore, if that is the case, this means that the three forces that are acting on this object should be in equilibrium. Then if you are drawing a head to tail method, then it should result in a non-zero resultant force. If you were to choose that there, to just to give you a second to choose as to which one will be correct, I'm sure you have all chosen A. A is the correct answer there. Now, I want us to, to look at also um, the Newton's Laws multiple choice question as well. This one is actually focusing on now uh, when two surfaces touch each other, the component of the contact force parallel to the surfaces is called the dash. Now already as the examiner says it's a contact force, then already if you can eliminate the, you will eliminate C. Why? Because gravitational force is a non-contact force. And then it continues to say that when two surfaces touch each other, component of the, the, the component of the contact force parallel to the surface is called the dash. Now, this, the contact force that is always parallel to the surface, we all know that is supposed to be the frictional force, not the normal force, because remember, the normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. Therefore, the correct answer there is D. Remember, the main concept is that the contact force is applied force, normal force, and frictional force. However, the difference between all of them that are mentioned is the fact that the frictional force is the only contact force that is parallel to the surface. So that is how you would answer your multiple choice question with regards to that. And then now another thing that learners sometimes struggle to do is to actually make up an expression for the normal, normal expression. Remember, the normal force is not a formula, but it is an expression because it is dependent on what is acting on the object. For example, if you look at this question, it says a lawnmower is pushed across the ground with a force of F at an angle of theta with the horizontal. The weight of the lawnmower is W. Now, if you look at the force at the direction of the force that is applied by that man, it is actually going downwards, which is in the same direction as the weight. That means that your normal force, that means that your F net in the vertical um, motion will actually be equal to zero. Now, when you actually make up your normal expression, it will be having normal pointing in the upward direction, and then you will have to break that down into two components, which is your Y component of the force applied and the X component of the force applied. Therefore, the Y component of the force applied and the weight are actually in the same direction. So what we know is that the normal force 
plus the Y component of the force applied plus the weight will actually be equal to a zero. Now, when you make that expression, then you would actually have um, that normal force will now equal B, will, will equal to B, A, which is the weight. That is not true because the weight the, is not the only vertical force that is there. And then you have got B, which is the weight plus the Y component, or C, which is the weight minus the Y component, or D, which is weight plus S, X, which is the horizontal component. So already A and D, you can eliminate them. Now, also, if you focus, now let's look at the next question, which actually also talks um, to um, a, a structured question now that actually um, talks to the normal force expression again that we can actually focus on. Here we have got an inclined plane, and in an inclined plane, we have got, it says that a block of mass of four kilograms is pulled upwards along a frictionless slope. So already when the examiner is saying that the slope is frictionless, what they are trying to tell you is that there is no friction or sometimes they will say it's a rough surface, meaning that there is friction to be considered. So it says that with a force of F, now if you look at the force of F, the force of F is actually not an at an angle there, but it is rather parallel to the surface. And this is on an inclined plane. So because this is on an inclined plane, you're going to have your weight in two components. You're going to have your weight, which will be parallel to the surface, which will be pointing downwards. And you're going to have your weight, which will be perpendicular to the, to the object, which will be the perpendicular component of the weight. And then you're going to have your normal there as well. Now, how can you express the, 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 the normal force? Is the normal force going to be A, which is equal to 4 times 9,8 times sine theta? That is not true because we also have got, because there we have got um, a perpendicular component of the force, of, of the weight that we have to, to actually consider, which is the force that's exerted by the earth on the 4 kg block. And then we also have, so is it, we know that the answer should be between um, B and C. A is obviously wrong, and then um, for, 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 for your D also, then um, B is wrong. Why? Because they have, it includes the force that is applied there, and that force is not at any angle. Therefore, we cannot exclude, include it in the vertical components when you're making F net in your vertical components. Therefore, the correct answer there should be D because your normal should be equal to the perpendicular component of the object. That is all for today.